welcome to Feywood. So today I thought I would finally start a project that I've been planning to do for a really long time. This seems to be a theme at the moment, um, circling back to projects that I had planned uh, a really long time ago and finally doing them, like the crystal painting one. Um, this is a similar situation. Now, uh, I don't know if any of you have been with me since the start. Uh, when I was a tiny little channel, I'm only slightly less tiny right now, but um, <laughs> if you have, you might remember I went shopping for a whole bunch of different just like secondhand books and I was all mysterious about, oh, I'm going to do an amazing project with, you know, all these books. Um, and I did have something great planned and I don't know other things happened you know and that's the way life can be you have a project in mind and you might even get all the stuff for it and you start it um, or don't even start it which is the case here and then something else comes in and sort of takes precedence and I basically just you know put it to the side and thought oh, I will finally get to that when it's the right time and I feel like now is the perfect time because um, I don't have any big projects going yet. I have a few that are going to start soon um, and it's a really great time for me to do some of those quicker project things and it's just like going to be a fun little thing for the studio. So um, recently uh, me and my husband went to a Harry Potter inspired um, <laughs> pop-up bar thing. They were very uh, careful not to have any actual references. In fact, we couldn't even name our team from any references to Harry Potter because of, yeah, copyright. So I was like, but it's just our team name. We're not, we're not publishing this anywhere, but that's okay. For whatever reason, it all had to be, you know, definitely not Harry Potter themed. Um, but they had, you know, the books that were sort of floating around the ceiling and stuff like that. And originally I had wanted to do the same thing for my studio way before this was even, um, an event that I went to, but, you know, uh, wanted to do that whole Harry Potter thing. In fact, I think, um, a lot of the inspiration for me came from, well, of course, Harry Potter, but there was also a bookshop, um, that I went into that had the books, uh, from the ceiling, you know, hanging down and things. And I thought, I really love that idea, but I really want to make it, make the books really special as well and not just to have random books up there. So I decided to get a bunch of books um, that I was happy enough to wreck. <laughs> so I'm really sorry if you like any of these books. Um, this is not a comment on any of the books and the content of any of these books. I don't, I haven't read them. I don't know what's in them. Um, they just seem like good shaped books that would be fun to make into something like a spell book. So I'm hoping to make really aged antique looking spell book tomes. I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to go about this. Um, <laughs> As I usually do, I'm flying by the seat of my pants. I have got a few different uh, materials and things that may help me to do this. And I want each book to have its own little, you know, um, feel to it and stuff. So it's a good opportunity to like play with a whole bunch of different processes and, you know, give different looks to each of the books and just make them look really cool and special. So. Without further ado, let's get started and see where this all takes us. Alright, so I think the first step is getting price tags removed. Um, and I'm going to remove any dust covers that are on any of these books so that they're ready to start playing with. books I know that I'll be able to paint with this water-based enamel because they're um, sort of paper-based they're not uh, they're not shiny and I think the paint will take 
I think these shiny ones I might spray paint because um, the spray paint should stick to that a bit better. Um, so I'll paint these ones first and then I'll spray paint these just so that we've got a base to work with. Well, I've got my pile of books here that I painted black. I just wanted to give a bit of a base coat to all of them so that it gave me a blank canvas to work with. It wasn't necessary um, to do the black first. Depends what you want to do on the book, I guess. You could stick things down and then paint it. But I just really felt like I needed to see it as a blank canvas before I could work out what I wanted to do with them. And and that's just going to help me visualize the books without all of the uh, fussy colors and things um, on each of them distracting me. So I, I just thought that would help me. So I've done that and then I went and printed off a bunch of like aged looking paper. Now I bought these uh, images from Etsy. You can buy a lot of electronic packs of images on Etsy. Um, if I can find the place I bought these from, I'll link it. Uh, I think it was something like um, Victoria Designs or something. I'll, I'll link it anyway for you guys, or I'll find something similar if you're wanting to do it this way. If you don't want to purchase these, you can absolutely create your own uh, by doing things like the tea staining, which is like steeping a tea bag and then painting it on. Or I often just use acrylic paint, to be honest with you, and just really water it down. Uh, I just thought I would give these a try because I just thought the images looked so nicely aged that it might look really cool. So we'll play around with that. Maybe I will do a couple on my own and we'll see how that all looks. But yeah, it definitely needs it in some of these books because, you know, that's just not going to cut it as a spell tome. And on the outsides, I'm going to play around with some different things. Uh, probably trying to give some sort of embossed look on some of them. Maybe put some jewels on some of them. Uh, we're going to play with a, a few different things and see what we come up with. So I didn't really know what I was going to do with these books when I started out. Uh, I had a look through my stash to see what I had and get some inspiration. I like to use these sort of projects to use up little bits and pieces that I might not have otherwise used uh, because, you know, you can um, use them so creatively and uh, have a think about things that you've got on hand that you may not have otherwise used. Um, so. I actually used an old invitation in the center of this one um, and then I created these leaves from that mold that you saw out of Sculpty and then I wanted to really incorporate it all together a little bit more so I just used uh, some tissue paper that I glued down over the top to create some just interesting shapes and things. Um, I had also some little plastic flowers, a little mushroom um, I did need to use some painting techniques though to bring all of it together like the mushroom was way too bright uh, and I really wanted to softly color everything so I painted it all black to start with uh, as a base and then I've used um, my rubbing waxes I've got those art alchemy rubbing waxes and I love those um, this I used a bronze for this one and then I actually used some metallic uh, like crayons that I had. Um, they look really cool actually. Now I wanted to add a little bit of glitter onto this one as well so I just sprinkled some of that around. Um, once I was done I did feel like I wanted more colour though so I decided to go over the black with a nice maroon red and fade that in. So this book I had um, some stickers that 
they're sort of like bamboo. Uh, I got them from a, just a cheap craft shop nearby and I got them because they did have some thickness to them so I figured they'd be interesting to use in projects. And then I've used um, modeling paste and um, different stencils that I was able to get on eBay to make some really interesting um, designs on the book. This is a really great way to add some texture if you want that sort of embossed look. And uh, you can find all different shapes and sizes with the um, stencils that you can use to do it. It does take a bit of time to dry. So although in this you're seeing uh, very much a time lapse between steps, uh, I usually left it for a day before I'd go back and paint over the top of it. Uh, now I did try using a little gold pen there. I really didn't like the way it looked so I, I went over it again with the gold rubbing wax instead because um, it just didn't come out how I wanted it to. But you can do all sorts of different techniques with these books. I mean, you're only limited by your imagination. Um, and you don't necessarily have to make these with the idea of hanging them up like I have. You could decide to just make a really interesting decorated book as a journal. Um, you may want to be doing some scrapbooking or something like that. And you want a fantasy style book. It's a really great way to reuse some books that you've got laying around, maybe that nobody reads anymore, and um, you know, use that for a craft project instead. So I did have these uh, little green, uh, well, they're all different colours, but um, you might have seen me stick that green shape on that had a bit of a booky... Uh, or picture frame look to it and it's a scrapbooking supply I picked up from Riot Art and Craft. Now if you don't have things like that in your stash then you don't need to worry because you can use things like cardstock, uh, you could use foam as well, craft foam. And then around the corners I had these uh, silver doilies that I got, Just they're just paper um, from the supermarket and I thought they'd look like uh, ornate book corners so uh, that was I thought a good little touch now again you could do this with um, paint or you could cut something out yourself or print something off to make some of these shapes uh, the options are limitless really So for the ne this next book, I decided to use some foam as the centre part. And I had these fairy stencils, so I figured this one could be a little fairy book. So each, one's, each book sort of has a little bit of a theme, uh, whether it's just a colour theme or design theme or an actual, you know, theme like fairy or whatever. Uh, I was trying to, you know, do each book a little bit different and you could sort of think of a narrative for it that, you know, this is a book uh, to learn spells about fairies, for example. Um, you could think, oh, I might make a book on poisons or a book on creatures. Uh, have a think about all different things that you might want to make a magic tome about. And that could be your inspiration. So I used a silver, like a dark silver rubbing wax and a purple one as well. Um, and then I had some stickers. Now, you might remember I did a snack swap with uh, the lovely Odin. And Odin sent me some stickers as well uh, in my parcel. So I thought that'd be perfect time to use them in this project. So if you've got like stickers or the, um, what are the other ones called? The thickers, even better. They've got some texture. You could paint them if they're not the color that you want to go for for this project. Um, and just have the embossed texture of the thicker. And you can see on the back page I've got a little fairy there that looks like she's blowing some pixie dust up into the air. Now I wanted a bit more detail showing so I, I had the silver pen 
and I decided to sort of go over everything with that to bring out all the texture. Now if you guys have been long time watchers of the channel you may have seen the dragon costume I did some time ago for the goblin ball and I still had some of the leftover dragon eyes that I got. Now I just got these from eBay again. Uh, so you can easily find dragon eyes on eBay, they're not expensive. And then I've used craft foam to cut out scales. Now this is an endeavour, it takes some time to cut out all the scales. Uh, but you know, it's not difficult, it's just time consuming. Now just to save me on some scale cutting, <laughs> I did mostly um, cluster them around the eyes and then uh, feathered them out after that. So you could more densely cover this in scales than I have if you so wish or you could just do like I have where the scales do sort of um, filter out after the eyes. You might remember that material from that costume as well. Um, so again this is the oil pastels, I think I called them crayons before which I guess they're glorified crayons really but um, <laughs> these are great for uh, things like this, like they, they just give a really nice colour to them. Uh, and then I did go over with a little bit of um, varnish just to make sure it stayed in place. I should have used probably an oil base. I, and I used a water base which sort of um, didn't sit on there perfectly but look it did dry and I think it gave enough coverage to keep things in place plus no one's going to actually be touching these books because they'll be hanging around on the ceiling. <laughs> so this is two part epoxy clay. Now I'm very new to two part epoxy clay and uh, I was not entirely sure how to sculpt this because it's so tacky. I've used it a couple of times in small projects but I've never actually done any full sculptures out of epoxy clay. I have only used it as you see here where I'm using it as a base to press crystals or beads into. Uh, so I went with what I know. I, I do want to play with this medium more though. Uh, now I used the um, crystals and beads but then I put some glitter around that as well because otherwise you're going to see that kind of grey clay. And again I'm using the tissue paper with just some PVA glue to add some texture. The idea of this book is really that there's this volcano of like crystalline magic that's trying to burst out of the book. So that's what I'm trying to achieve with all of this. Um, to help me do that I had some cardstock there and what I did was uh, I ripped it with keeping one edge straight so I could sit that on the edge of the book and when you rip cardboard like this it does often want to naturally curl up and it really helps to add to that idea of this magic bursting through the front page of this book. And I just surrounded the whole um, little volcano of crystals I guess with these little curls of paper. Now it's hard to see at the moment but what I decided to do was again my wonderful rubbing waxes. I know I use them in so many things but I do find them to be a, a very good medium. So I just really wanted to, to accentuate the cardstock and those curls of paper that are um, surrounding this and it looks then more like it's bursting out of the paper.
Now I decided I had to put a steampunk book in there and it's just a fairly simple design this but uh, I grabbed some images from um, online of just cogs and things like that so that I could cut those out and use them as a bit of a template on again some foam. This is just an old off cut of foam. Uh, again I think I used this foam for that same dragon costume. Now you could use actual cogs for this. Uh, I'm a bit of a cheapskate and I didn't want to use any of my really nice um, altered art supplies for the book, especially just considering that uh, this will be hanging from the ceiling and you're not going to see really uh, fine details. So it, it just didn't seem worth putting lots of really nice cogs and things onto it. Plus there was a bit of a curve to the book itself. So having something like the foam is going to curve and glue down nice and flat against that shape. You guessed it, rubbing wax. <laughs> so predictable. <laughs> uh, but yeah, perfect. Um, I was thinking I do have some rust paint and I did consider using the rust paint uh, but it does take a few days for that to um, get the rusty appearance and initially I thought I was going to finish this project relatively quickly I was totally wrong and I had plenty of time to do a rust finish if I wanted to but um, yeah anyway I for speed sake I used paint <laughs> Now I didn't use a two-part epoxy for this because again I was just not sure how to go about that with my tools because it's tacky so I just went for the super sculpty. I do definitely want to delve into the two-part epoxy more and learn more about that uh, but for the number of things I had to do for this project I wanted more speed I guess because it was already going to take me a fair bit of time. Uh, yeah, so I was a bit messy with my um, <laughs> modeling paste there. Um, not a big deal. If you get it in a wrong spot, you can just wipe it off. It doesn't even matter if there's a bit of a smear on there because it's you'll only see it once you've painted it if there's a lot left, you know, and um, enough that it's going to be a raised bump, but otherwise it's fine. So. But you could definitely be a lot more careful than I was. I was pretty slapdash. <laughs> now it definitely wasn't my best skull, but it was okay. And to be honest, I could, I probably should have carved those bones out of the clay as well. I thought it would look okay to paint them on afterwards, but if I was doing it again, I probably would have sculpted those bones as well. So that's a bit of lace that I've put in the center there, the butterfly, because it'll add some texture. Um, again, I'm adding a lot of lace to the spines of the books on these and a lot of that's to do with the fact that when you open the books up, the paint wants to crack and peel away. So, and not that they're going to open and close because they're not going to be used, but um, I just wanted to make sure that there wasn't damaged spots on the books. And so in that place where there was a lot of movement of the book, I thought it's best to have lace instead. Lace has some give to it, so you can put that on and not be worried about uh, anything happening. It'll, it'll look nicer 
the paint's not going to come off it. It's just a better way to do it. So this was just some, uh, like that centre part is just an old bit of um, jewellery that I didn't, that, like I've got a sort of stash of that stuff for projects. Uh, that are things that I'm not going to use in a jewellery piece, but that would be fine for a craft project. Uh, again, I've used that sort of picture frame shape that I got from Riot Art and Craft, which is like a scrapbooking supply, and I have gold doilies as well, so I've used those on the outside to give a nice gold effect. Um, and what I did was I painted black over them, but sort of sponged it away, uh, or just kept a lighter wash so that you could still see some of the gold, but it looked antiqued. Another sticker from Odin as well. It was looking a bit too stark white though so I tried to put some glitter around it and a little bit of the rubbing wax over the top. So this is all my books. Um, I don't know what I've filmed before this. This project has honestly been spread out over at least a month, if not longer. Um, with all the craziness in the world that's happening, um, it got pushed back. And it just took me a while as well. Uh, and then, you know, I, I wanted to add some more colour to some of these. So I think I did film some saying, oh, the books are ready, but... Then I had a look at them all together and I sort of thought, oh, I kind of want a bit more colour. So you can see I added some green onto this one, some teal onto that one, some glittery. Oh, I think I did have some of the red on this, but I added a bit more. Um, this one's just like a maroon red. And on oh, that one's sort of rusty colours. Just roughly done, you know, um, I didn't want them to be um, perfect. In fact, I want them to look really loose and really um, aged and weathered and, yeah, uh, I'm pretty happy with how they're looking. Um, another thing that took me a long time to do with these was the insides of the books. Now, I approached this differently for the different books and I'll show you why. <laughs> um, so this one, this is a book about cricket and I didn't really want you to capture glimpses of people playing cricket in this, you know, supposed to be spell book. Um, but it is going to be hanging up on the ceiling so it didn't need to be completely covered. So you can see like I've sprayed ink on this. Now I had some leftover ink that's uh, for paper crafting that was brown with an iridescent flash to it. Uh, actually, this one, um, which I've refilled with something else now, just to use the spray bottle. This is now just a, a writ brown fabric ink, um, which I used for a different book because I ran out of the other one. Uh, yeah, so I just wanted enough to kind of obscure what's in the book when it's hanging up and look kind of a little bit old it wasn't um like look if you're being a total perfectionist which i was tempted by <laughs> you would possibly remove all of this and put something aged in there instead um or cover up all the pages you know um like a junk journal type of thing i just felt like that was a lot of work for something that's going to be hanging in this on the ceiling and uh not entirely visible so i just left that one of course some of them i couldn't take the same approach because the 
pages were like color pages now i would recommend if you're doing this um pick books that have just plain text inside like this um although you can see i did that upside down which <laughs> somehow i managed to do a number of these books so the text is upside down to the cover again i'm not really concerned because like they're not meant to be read it's going to be hanging up you really won't be able to tell but look, maybe pay attention to that if it's going to bother you. Um, and some of this is sticking a little bit. Uh, so you can see this one, all I did, I just used um, a printout of like an aged paper that I glued onto the, in the front cover and I did it on the same on the back. And the rest I left because I'm not concerned about that at all. Um, this one was colour... Uh, pictures and this was like um shiny pages now that is much harder to cover so i would suggest when you're picking out old books to do this with it is much easier to use hardcover like novels that you won't be able to tell what the content of them is um or just pages without like really big color pictures that are uh you know that don't look in keeping with what you're trying to achieve because then you're going to have to cover them all up. Now I did that with this one. You can see, unfortunately, the glue that I used um, meant that it became a bit translucent and you can see a little bit of like the children's book pages underneath. Again, this is sort of upside down, but, um, you know, I don't really care um, too much about that. I could cover that even more if I wanted to potentially like paint over it or something like that but you know it's going to be obscured enough because I mean this is going to be hung up like a magic book so you're really not going to see it um, but that's another option is you could cover every page with paper these are papers this is a, a really bad example but like I used the same sort of aged paper I purchased a pack of um digital paper from Etsy so digital files that look like really old paper and printed that off and stuck it in there on each page for that one but that's a lot of work so it's probably not what you want to do if there's a lot of pages it does get thick as well if you're adding a lot and I think I did have to remove a number of pages and glue a number of pages together so that I had less pages to cope with uh some of the other ones again another one upside down um you know this one was okay as is it has some pottery pictures but honestly not um enough that i'm worried about but i did put you know the aged paper glued in at the front and back again on that one uh there was a couple that i tried to paint so um this one had like colored pictures on every single page um so it was a kid's story time book i think or was this the one that was about um bible tales or something i can't remember what this one had in it but like lots of pictures basically that i didn't want showing because it doesn't suit and so i had to paint them all black and then I used a bit of my um, rubbing wax over the top to give some gold sheens and stuff to it. It It's arguably, it's not perfect. I could be fastidious and cover up all the little nicks and things. But it, again, it's going to be hung up. So, it you know, you're not going to get a, a real close glimpse at this. So, uh, given that, I, I'm going to just leave it as is because... Um, I think it'll be fine and I, I don't I just don't want to spend too much more time on it really uh, but yeah so that's that one uh, that one yeah that was just pages uh, and then another one that I painted and then I do have another example of what you can do which is this one so what I did with this one this is glued so that all the pages are glued together um, so this had again too many pictures in it and it would have been too much work to uh, individually cover every page so instead uh, what I did was just hold it open like that 
um, you know, flat on the table. I got my uh, Mod Podge and I glooped that very um, thickly around the sides and very generously. And then once that dried, I put um, this aged paper. Again, I got that from an Etsy um, pack of old paper. I'll see if I can get a link to where I bought my paper from or some similar papers uh, because those digital files can be helpful if you want an aged paper. If you don't want to do that, you could just like get a piece of paper and get some, you know, um, either acrylic or you could um, use tea or coffee to dye the paper, um, do some ripped, torn edges and things like that. Uh, whatever you want to do. But yeah, so that's a way to kind of combat lots of pages at once if you don't want to have to cover them all up and then you're not having to look at any of the pages it will have to stay kind of like this and I didn't want every book to look like that so as in look like the pages are big chunks like that I wanted some to be hanging freely so that's why I did some differently than the others um, I'm going to try and hang these up now. I don't know how long this video is going to be because honestly I have so much footage of doing all of these different books. <laughs> I hope this works out well. I'm planning to hang it up. I'm thinking I will hang it up here. So I'm going to try and use some picture hanging hooks, hammer them into the top there and hang the books at different lengths so that they look like they're floating around up there magically. 